<laughs> this is Jackie with your All Access interview, and I'm here with Aura Gar. Or the Gartland. That That's pretty. <laughs> no, it's pretty. <laughs> this is Jackie with your All Access interview, and I'm here with Orla Gartland, and uh, we are here at South by Southwest, and uh, it's a it's a it's a nice day. We're we're getting settled in here today. Nice. It's, uh, it's sticky as usual, but it's okay. Kind of cast over, which I prefer. Being better than yeah. yesterday? I can't be in the sun. I actually can't. It's like an illness. So I have to be really bitter in the shade all the time. So I'm looking at the gray skies and like loving life. So it's good. See, that's a good way to be cheerful about the weather. So Orla, you have a unique way that you got started. Uh, you even got started in music. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, I was a total YouTube geek. I'm from Dublin originally, and everything technology-wise is like slightly behind in Ireland, not massively, but just like maybe a couple months behind the kind of big online trends and bandwagons. And I was watching a lot of people in the UK making YouTube videos, like just like video blogs, but also music stuff, and really admiring what they were doing. And I hopped on that bandwagon, was probably by default and accidentally one of the first people in Ireland to kind of really get into it. Um, so me and my friends were kind of making all these videos and people were like, this is a really, it was like a really weird kid thing to do. It wasn't like everyone, it's quite like a, a big thing nowadays to like do covers from your bedroom, but it was like very strange at the time. Um, and just garnered a modest following, which are this, you know, somehow still very lovely and loyal and come along to shows. And, and that was my little gateway in. And now, yeah, now I get to do all the traditional elements of being a musician and recording and writing and touring. But that's how it started for me. Yeah, very online roots, which was good. That's a good way to get started. So uh, tell me about all the different instruments that you play. Yeah, I play guitar, which is the main one. May, I began on acoustic, but like really getting into electric now because I'm becoming obsessed with electric guitar pedals, which just make everything sound really different. Mm -hmm. See, when you play acoustic, you're like, this is fun, but everything kind of sounds the same, and which is fine sometimes, but then someone gives you this pedal and it sounds like a you know, a chainsaw, and you're like, yeah! <laughs> so currently really obsessed with that, but that's just one instrument, really, that's guitar. Uh, I play ukulele, which is very similar to guitar, but um, I don't know, I f feel mixed feelings about the ukulele, because it's like makes everything really happy, which is like really, really good sometimes, and sometimes you just want to be a bit of a mellow, emo singer-songwriter that's just making everything really chirpy. Um, I play a little bit of keys and piano, but I'd like to get better. And yeah, bits and bobs here and there, but mainly guitar is me. Very nice. Uh, is there one song that best... Um best proves or shows exhibits your sound yeah probably i mean everyone would probably say them their latest thing but i guess that's how you, you feel about your own music all the times you feel like you're constantly getting a little bit closer to where you'd like to be so i did an ep which is like my second one uh last month i think yes last month and the title track of that was called lonely people and it was like the first song where i felt like it was really coming together and like honing in on the sound that i was hoping for i'm like very heavily influenced by like a lot of 80s pop girls like Kate Bush and Cindy Lauper and some Fleetwood Mac and stuff so it felt like finally I felt like I could sort of weave those sort of things into production in a in a seamless way which which took a while to come together but yeah I was really happy with that. And South By is uh, definitely not Dublin Ireland <laughs> weather wise or location wise. Um, how do you make sure that you leave your mark with all of these fans that are sort of just are circulating around the city. What do you do that makes you unique when you play a showcase? Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? It's like tricky to cut through the noise a little bit, but in a way that I think is good and I think it pushes you and from the artist end of it, it's interesting because no one really gets sound checks here, which everyone has mixed feelings about. But I, I quite like it in a way. I played my first showcase last night and was like, at the time, wasn't loving the lack of sound check. There was like a whole song where my guitar wasn't playing and I was like, I'm just gonna have to roll with this. But I think that's what's kind of good about it. I think when you play headline stuff all the time, you become this like seamless machine and you're traveling around with your own crew and sound guys and it can become a little bit like, you know, bit of a slump every day it's the same thing but like with this you just have to look alive and play you know play your best because everything's going wrong and the you know, it's like feedback and your guitar isn't working so it kind of pushes you which is good but I'm not sure what makes me different I don't know I don't know I feel like I'm very much myself on stage which I know everyone would probably say but I can come across very dorky I guess in a way that I try and embrace um, but yeah I don't know I just try and be myself as much as possible solid advice from the parents um, because I think you can get a little bit too into the gimmick sometimes. I see a lot of bands that are like amazing. I, I appreciate like amazing branding and, and, and group outfits and like people handing out things and stuff. I think if you just try and give it socks with the performance, I feel like that is maybe a little more important. I agree with you that if you, if you can't make a good performance, 
no matter how much merch or out costuming you have, it's not going to make up for it. It has to do with the prep as well. I mean, like the songs are obviously like such a key part of anything. And I think, like I said, if all of the sound things are going wrong and if your guitar is failing and you can't hear yourself with a monitor and you're probably singing in the wrong key and all this like horrible stuff. But if, if at the core of it, you've got decent songs and have done your leg work and your, your practice, then I feel like that comes across in a good way, hopefully. Something else that comes across in a good way. Um, you've helped use your voice to help some charities. Can you tell me a bit about that? Charities? Yes, indeed. So there was a couple of charities at home I did. Uh, I was involved in like a charity compilation album for a couple of mental health charities in Ireland, which is like really cool. It's like a really big talking point in Ireland at the moment because I think Irish people are amazing, but we love to... Well, actually, you guys wouldn't use this phrase at all, which I think is really interesting. We love to take the piss out of each other, which is really, really weird, literally phrase. What that means is you love to, like, take people down a peg and, like, to kind of slag people and kind of cut them. And it, it's all in, like, a good, like, good-natured way. Uh, but it doesn't lend itself to people being really open and speaking up when they have problems because, especially in, like, a big group of lads in Ireland as well, it's like you have a load of people and one guy's feeling a bit sad and, oh, you know, what a wuss. And, you know, they really, like, hammer home. So it's been, like, a really interesting movement of the mental health charities in Ireland at the moment because people are, like, speaking up about it and being, like, it's okay to be sensitive and come on, guys. So that's, like, been a particularly interesting movement that I've been, like, dipping my feet in and helping when possible. But that's been the main one so far. But it's good. It's good to be involved in those things. Everyone's nice. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so what's up next for you after South By? That's a good question. I'm probably going to go back and try and readjust to a completely different time zone. Uh, no, I don't go straight away, actually. I, so I'm in the middle of a tour, which is, which is quite fun. So I moved from, from right to left, from cold to warm. We did the East Coast at five dates there. Um, and then this is obviously like a nice hub in the middle. And then do San Francisco and L.A., which is going to get slightly even warmer again. God knows that I'm not going to be able to handle that with my skin at all. Just gonna be like creeping in the shade again. So there's that, and I think I think I'll probably stay in LA for a while, do some writing. Because when you're on the continent, why not make the most of it? And then eventually, in a couple of weeks' time, I'll go back to London and hopefully start working on the next release. Yeah, and keep it, keep it going, keep honing the craft. <laughs> keep going. So stay tuned for much more from Orla Garland. This is Jackie. Thanks to All Access and In the Key of Change.